All right. Okay, guys. So um, starting with uh, front end applications, we had certain tasks that we wanted to skin uh, the issuer app. Um, and uh, uh, we, we did push it through and uh, yes, we, we do have um, the issuer app is skinned. There are very minor, uh, I would say content changes, for example, what text should be here what image should be here, should it be changed or not. But those things are very uh, like minimal and can be taken care of. So isko to main, I think I'll spend some time on this uh, uh, today maybe if I find time, I mean based on what else I have to do. And then maybe I can look into what could be the content because I want it, it to uh, be very easy to use that you see this website and you know how to run the demo. And right now you cannot. So, um, the skinning is pretty good. I mean, uh, great work by the team. And uh, let me just quickly show you guys how it looks like. All right, so yeah, I know there are no checks and validations right now. So that's something we, uh, we wanna look into next sprint. You know, add some validations, make sure that the fields are right and all and everything is in place and all. So, the front end uh, issuer app skinning is done, technically speaking, and a little bit cosmetic changes here and there. Uh, that might be just enough to move on. So the only thing that's now in the in the pipeline and next steps is to come this key backing cell integration. Kare. And just as I showed you guys, um, we have. Uh, let me. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we have the uh, the. The instances, the Docker instances here, container instances running that uh, are uh, handling the whole backend ecosystem, including the agency. Oh yeah, that is something, um, coming back to the point here. Yeah. Um, all right, so like I told you, issuer app skinning is done, but uh, uh, there is some work done on the verifier skinning app. I think um, Saeed did it today and sent me a message, but there are some, uh, there's a lot of work that needs to go into this. We cannot uh, let it just slide. So basically, uh, it's my assets ka thoda masla hai and uh, flow ke bhi issues hai. Uh, I remember, Saeed, you were asking ke uh, were your flows theek hai ke nahi. I checked the app, app mein flows ke issue hai, uh, at least with this one, the verifier one. So iska flow or iski skinning jo hai na, it requires a little bit of thinking and then uh, we, I think it can be done in a, in next half sprint. So uh, coming coming next week, we can spend a week on this and maybe get it done. Um, it totally depends on how much time the people in the team can take out. So that's the status on front-end apps right now. Uh, like I told you, the um, issuer app ki skinning completely ho chuki hai aur uski integration par kaam karna hai. The cosmetic changes we will just uh, yeah, we'll get along with them and fix them on the way. Uh, verify app key skinning but thoda sa kaam karne ki zarurat hai. And then of course next in uh, next in line for that is also the uh, integration of the backend. Um, another thing that uh, we were looking into in this print was the integration with the uh, CI pipeline with Heroku, which means ki ye jo applications may locally run kar rahe paas. They should be automatically deployed when you push some code. Um, why am I writing push? I need to write GitHub. Yes. So whenever you push some code into, let's say, the master branch for your application, it should technically automatically deploy it to this application here. Um, I think some work is done by Predit on this. I haven't tested it. And there was no PR, it was more of a uh, configuration work. So in order to test this, I need to push something into master to see if it's working. And um, we'll do, we'll do. So that's something I need to test. Um, if anybody else wants to do it, please go ahead. It will make my life more easier. Uh, besides that, um, Verifier, uh, Verifier app ka bhi same issue tha. Okay, we wanted to have a CI uh, continuous integration pipeline CD pipeline, continuous deployment pipeline for it. Um, so I think uh, Safi hit a wall there. Safi was uh, looking into doing the same thing, uh, but with a 
I believe with a script uh, and he has it in his forked repo, I believe, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, here it is. So the YAML script here. So this is something that we need to debug. Uh, Safi, you can also take a look into, uh, just I remember now, if you uh, cloud agent ki repo, I have a lot of scripting. Par kaam ki hai. It's mostly scripts. Uh, where is it? Cloud agent. Hey, CoVID cloud agent. So majorly, um, here are Git actions used. And you can take a look at this, how this one is working. But this one is majorly integrating. Um, whenever you push this code to master, it deploys the accreditor issuer verifier to the Azure cloud. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Automatically. So uh, maybe take a look at this. Maybe it could be helpful. Maybe there's something you're missing. Nahi hai. So of course we can take time together and sit down and try to troubleshoot it together. Uh, in case somebody already has experience with this uh, of deploying Heroku apps on uh, uh, via the GitHub Actions, please uh, uh, get in touch with uh, Safi and uh, maybe you guys can work together. If not, Safi, if you don't find anyone, uh, please uh, ping me. Maybe um, I, I have done it, not with GitHub Actions, but uh, separately. Maybe I can be of any assistance. All right. That was the status on CI integration. Any anything you want to add on that, guys? I mean, CI integration and front end skinning. Is there anything? Any questions? Any comments? Any uh, anything you want to put there? Said, Safi, Aman, Karma, Asan, Sohil, but anybody? Are you guys still listening to me, by the way? Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. It's nice if you would be able to give me an <laughs> acknowledgement that <laughs> you're there. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Moving forward, like I, uh, I, I sent a message on the Slack and uh, on WhatsApp, uh, I guess yesterday, maybe, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So we have a good news. We have an agency that's working. I did the testing and it's working flawlessly. So far, there could be some issues. I don't deny that. Um, but until we put it into action, we won't know. Um, if you're interested in how it works, uh, ping me or just fork the code, try to have some fun with it. Um, I have tried to put um, some documentation how you can run it on your own. It might need some, actually if you run it via Docker, you don't need anything. You can just run these two commands and you're good to go. It, it should work on your machine. You don't need any sort of uh, dependencies or anything. But if you wanna run it locally, like just by, you wanna run this script and wanna make it work, then you need a lot of dependencies. I mean, a lot, I mean, a lot. And then there's some hidden dependencies which are not even written here. Um, I should definitely add them to the documentation. But the idea is that if you do a Docker uh, deployment locally or over a cloud, it should work flawlessly. Um, I have taken some shortcuts in this code base because we, we needed a solution really fast. So uh, the storage uh, and the security of this module uh, is not up to the production grade, in my opinion. Uh, but it's good for a POC right now. So we will be able to demo and move forward with this. But uh, let's say if we go to pilot, we can spend some more time and making it more robust and fixing, uh, um, making its security more better. Um, that's pretty much it. So technically speaking, this piece of code, if you run it, allows you to create n number of wallets on a agent, actually, yeah, on an agent and allows you to manage those wallets, which means that hundreds and thousands of users can talk to one server and request that home, home uh, each, each user can individually request that, okay, how many connections do I have? Uh, do I have any credentials? Uh, accept my credentials or whatnot. So it can manage a lot of, um, uh, a lot of uh, wallet operations on behalf of users. Uh, over uh, that's why it's called a multi-tenant agency. Now I know Suhail, by uh, you had some certain reservations on this. Um, do you have any comments uh, about it? Uh, where did this come from? 
this came from uh, Aries Cloud Agent. No, what I'm saying is who developed this? Particularly this. I mean, it's a bit more complicated than it sounds, but um, uh, this is the baseline code, which is the Aries Cloud Agent Python, which we are using on our backend, right? Or right. Was verified, yeah. So I took this, I stripped it off from all the things that are not needed in an agency. And I went really deep into it and made it into an agency and published this code. Okay. So you developed this basically. Yeah. I, I, I took some, um, it took me some time. It's, it, it took me like, I think two weeks to do this. But um, there was no other way. Uh, other people in the team were not able to cope up really with the, the problems and the architecture of uh, cloud, Aries cloud uh, agent. Agent. So uh, I did discuss with, um, um, I think, uh, Vakas. And um, he gave me a go ahead that, okay, he can take a look at the code base later and give any improvement suggestions. So it's right here. And uh, so feel free to run it, try it out, and um, let me know if you have any problems. Technically so speaking, this, this, so this acts as a controller, yes. talks to the cloud agent, um, and on the other side, or this replaces the cloud agent completely. It, it replaces the need of cloud agents for all the mobile apps. So imagine you have 100 users which have 100 Vexify apps installed on their phone. You cannot run 100 agents for them on a cloud because it will be really costly. This, this comes in a solution as a, you run this one agency and it manages all those 100 wallets on its own. All those users, they can store their own personal secret keys on their phones and talk to this agency and control their wallets. Now, there is a way that you can sync those wallets on their local phone as well, and, or, but that's maybe the next step. Right now, the wallets are stored um, within where the agency is. So this, uh, this agency yeah. basically handles the keys and everything for the mobile agent? Yeah. Okay. So that solves the problem of the backup as well then, huh? Yeah, definitely it does. Um, okay. It was inspired by the project I did for my employer. Wait a second guys, I have a message. Uh, I have, okay, all right. Um, so I showed you guys this. Um, this, is, um, this is an open source project that I did with my employer. It, did, it does exactly the same thing. It's literally the same thing. Um, it's, it's pretty well documented as well. If you're interested, take a look on the, um, the security of it or functionality of it or whatnot. So um, the idea behind this one is that it uses only Indy. That's it. So since I had experience of building this in which I used um, Indy to create an agency out of Indy framework, I had some idea how I could do that with 80s but it was not as straightforward because there is no simple uh, framework available for Aries. There's one in Go, but it's not fully compatible yet. I mean, it has some missing things. So the idea was that this magic um, thing here, Aries Cloud Agent, it can do, it's, it's, it's the most mature project they have. And this is the one the British Columbian, uh, uh, British Columbia government uh, actually worked on. If you go into the licenses, you eventually find out it here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Based on, yeah, province of British Columbia here. So they built it, they donated it. This is a project they have been working on from last three years. It's, it's stable, it's good. And what they did, they converted into Aries and it's, and they have releases for this, which means it's, it's pretty good. They have 17 releases for this so far. So we took the latest release, the 0.5.2, which was made 15 days ago and we converted it into an agency. And so far it's working fine. I know there are some drawbacks in there. I, I because I know I'm, uh, I, since I was in there, I understand the, where it could lack, but I also know that those problems can be fixed because I was trying to be, I was trying to hurry up with a solution. So I, like I said, I took some shortcuts, but uh, I know that there's a better way to improve this, which we can do in future. I mean, we can make some future comments and, 
uh, make it more better, more secure, more robust, and more thread friendly and parallel integration or whatnot. But so far, this does the job. Okay, great. Okay, um, coming back to the document. All right, so this is the status on the Aries Cloud a multi tenant agency. And like, a, uh, and the backend agents are already ready. Uh, code for that you can find, like I said, uh, in the repo here in the Cloud Agency Python and in the CoIDE Cloud Agent. Yeah, uh, other we are just using just the clean cloud agents. So if let's say look at issuer agent here, um, you can see that I'm just installing simple ADS cloud agent and I'm just running it with certain configurations, that's it. And on the other side, we run our own agency that talks to this over DITCOM protocol and handling all the, all the problems that we we'll ever face automatically because it's compatible completely, hopefully. Um, all right, other thing, yes, the documentation, it's there. Uh, let me quickly open documentation for you guys. So people who will be working on the integration along with me, because I will be taking some part in integration, helping you guys in understanding the flow of the integration. Um, this is the Postman documentation here in this uh, repo over here, or kuch yahan par bhi majood hai, I mean, uh, cloud agent ki repo mein bhi ek uh, Postman ki uh, documentation available hai. So these API calls, uh, these uh, so-called agency and agents, they act as RESTful APIs and you call these servers to make some actions. For example, you want to create a wallet on agency, you call this API call, uh, create wallet and you send in your API secret and it will, uh, and of course, what's your wallet name and the seed of your wallet and it, it creates a wallet and send you a secret back that you have to store. Um, we will go through that part later on in another meeting, what do we, which calls are needed because you might not even need all of them. You might only need two of them, but this particular documentation tells you uh, what it can do. Technically speaking, this can do a lot more than uh, what's written here, but in the scope of our Vaxify project, uh, these calls are crucial, um, which means receiving a connection request, getting all your credentials, uh, there are some that we can add. I need to discuss that with uh, maybe Swahil Bai and uh, uh, some of you guys in order to figuring that out. But um, uh, we are already compliant with that. It means if we change the flow a little bit here and there, authentication maybe we need to receive this first or send that later. It's capable of doing everything. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. Part. We just need to define what needs to be done. Other thing is the Aries Cloud Agents. They're deployed, they're really basic, and uh, this makes life easier to understanding them. That you want to get the connections for that issuer agent um, on your, let's say, uh, this app here. Where is it? Yeah, let's say this app, you want to uh, create a credential, right? So you go somewhere, issuer create credential. Issuer issue credential to prove it. Yeah, here it is. This is a call that you call with this body. Of course, we will talk about it later, what's the key, what are the key elements in there? Wait a second. Yeah, we should create. Yeah, and then of course, what will be the response of it and what we're gonna do with that response. Those are all flow talks that we can do. But uh, having said that, the idea behind telling you all of this, uh, or telling you all about this is, okay, the documentation required for integration is also there. It just needs to be understood. And we can have a meeting about that, either today or coming next week because it's already um, okay guys give me a minute I need to put plug in a charger for my laptop right okay so documentation is there um, and the secrets for accessing the, um, the live cloud agents, I mean, you need the secret API keys and all. I think I have put that somewhere. Where have I put that? Files. Some of the office, we have Trustnet, COVID initiative, secrets, cloud agents. Yeah, so I have the accreditor issue verify secrets here. 
I need to definitely take the other secret manager and move some secrets from there. So password oops, oops. one. So this one is free. You can install it. Um, that's why, and, and it's easy to share with your teams, other secrets, if they don't even if they own the free plan. Um, this one is paid. So I have some secrets here that uh, talk about, okay, like other many agency access can so I need this particular password here. And this is the, the URL for that. Let's say if I copy it, I can show you that it actually works. I'm not gonna put the secret here. It's gonna give me an error here right now. Should give me an error. Oh, actually it's on 2000. Yeah, here, 401. Um, yeah, so it's unauthorized because there's no key. The key is here. I'm not gonna put it because this meeting is getting recorded right now. So get my key along with that will be recorded. So I don't wanna expose that. It's on our live server. I can share that with the people who will be working on uh, uh, the integration so that they have the access to the required secrets in order to work on the integration. All right, we are halfway through. Um, yeah, that's the, I think we, we're halfway through because um, we also talked about the road ahead, which is the integration of agency and the agents to the uh, issuer and verified applications. And of course, in the mobile application. So mobile app ki jo integration hai, wo agency ke saath hogi or issuer app ki issuer agent ke saath hogi, verified app ki verified agent ke saath hogi. Accreditor ka koi face nahi hai, accreditor will be just issuing one credential which we can use, we, we can issue manually via postman and, but it will be validated uh, uh, definitely on the back end. Just to make sure ke jo accreditor, um, jo issuer credential issue kar hai, he's valid, he's uh, like verified. All right. The rules team uh, has been uh, somewhat working on the schema and the credential. I uh, took the liberty of jumping into it and creating um, um, an ontology. I'm not sure. Zan hasn't been able to join us. I think he's also. I need to get in touch with him though. Uh, so, Elbert, did you happen to have a chat with uh, Zan or any, anybody from uh, like Sami maybe on, on this? I'm sorry. Uh, I was very busy this week. So, I'm sorry. Right. I, didn't, I mean, right. I saw the I, message. Yeah, I looked no at it, but uh, inshallah, next week I should have much more time. Yeah. Inshallah. Okay, no problem. I can. Be, I have some time on my hands, so I'm. I'm. I'm going to join you in this because this is becoming now priority. Because in order to have the integration there, we need to have the the credentials and credential attributes are important that we figure them out. I do know that you have been looking looking into the JSON LD, understanding it. Why is it like that? Honestly, yeah. um, Aries is compatible of having Indy based uh credentials which means simple credentials keep key value pairs all right so if we can figure out those key value pairs it can help us a lot so what i did i i was in a meeting with the, the cci uh last week tuesday and i saw somebody uh doing something really interesting and i um i took the same approach and it helped a lot i'm going to show you what he did and i'm going to show you what i did um, I think he was CCI's um, work stream. Yeah, yeah. So he worked, there was a guy who was working on a project in the CCI, uh, one of the sister projects, and uh, he created an ontology. Um, I have worked on ontologies um, in past, um, actually in my, on, in my bachelor's program. Um, so yeah, so he created this um, ontology that helped him understand what kind of uh, uh, flow and uh, relationship of entities is there in order to create a credential that he actually designed, wanted to uh, reach and which is here actually. Um, so they came up with this in the end. So what I did was uh, I sat down last night. Uh, I had, uh, I, since I was done with the agency work, I looked into building um, um, an ontology of our Paxify use case. So this particular ontology talks about um, person, a verifier organization, issuer organization, and uh, yeah, and then an accreditor, an accreditation certificate, and a vaccination certificate, what kind of attributes it could have, and who's gonna give whom what, and they could be a subject to a person which talks about its delegation, like a kid or whatnot. 
So uh, long story short, the idea is to look at this and figure out this. I have updated the ontology here, put it here. Uh, you can use this website to actually upload this file, which I have added to, and you will see the exactly same ontology I see. And um, what, if you want to understand what an ontology is, what it represents, it's a, there's a small two, three minutes video you can watch here in order to understand what are the benefits of it and why you should we even worry about that. I guess it can help us figure out these two credentials, that what will be involved in these, okay? And I think, um, and, and of course the flow, which is also very important, and not only figuring out these, but the flow, how, who will be issuing what to whom and uh, who will be verifying what and where. So that needs to be discussed on. I think we can do a next week meeting with the rules team, with the Zan and you, and uh, maybe if somebody else wanna join in the governance team, and we can discuss about the whole ecosystem of um, how the, uh, this is gonna work, I mean the, the credentials, okay? How does that sound? Sure, okay. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so that's the update from my side, yeah. One good news to you, all of you guys, um, Mashable just um, published us. Uh, I was in touch with them for a while and um, we were in talks and they sent me a draft, I verified the draft. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a paid document. I mean, it's not a paid content, it's uh, just good PR content. So that's why there are no URLs in this. So they need money if we want to um, get some like paid content out there. But maybe we can think about that later when we do a release. Uh, but so far, this is pretty good. It's a pretty good um, uh, marketing uh, like avenue for us. So guys, uh, feel free to share it um, and be proud of it that you're part of this. And uh, if you are interested, what I can do is I can quickly send you a link to this. It will help you. Um, where is it? Yeah, and um, let's see, I'm, I'm gonna have a meeting with Sami regarding the marketing's next phases. I mean, how we're gonna carry it out. So there are some challenges that we need to deal with in terms of PR. So just to let you know, guys, uh, there's this um, new article out there. Um, and uh, one surprising thing also happened, um, if I'm not wrong, uh, tech juice also published us and they never talked to us this was the weirdest thing that has ever happened to me uh, Mark, yes so what happened was the tech juice uh, if you know tech juice yeah it's one of the blogs and tech blogs in Pakistan they published us in June and they never reached out to us they never talked to us about publishing us they never asked us any questions. They just took a story from somewhere. I don't know where exactly, but they published this. And this is like old, old, like June 26th. And we are in like July 11th. And I never knew it. I was just Googling Vexify to see what pops up, how the SEO doing. And I figured out, oh my God, there's, a, there's an article on, uh, Vexify, which talks about us and COVID creds and all uh, by, by Trek. And <coughs> interestingly, um, the, the founder, Fatma, she's quite, quite busy. And um, well, it, it was kind of surprising for me to see this. All right. Um, okay, coming back to the, any, any, anything guys, any, any questions? Any comments so far? I'm gonna try one last time. Yeah. To, because now the technical architecture, the infrastructure is becoming clearer. Mm -hmm. I really suggest one more time, think about immunity rather than vaccination. Because what's happening is events are overtaking what we are doing basically. Yeah. I'm afraid by the time we finish, 
uh, this thing will be irrelevant uh, because already, uh, you know, they've started using uh, immunity certificates for travel. Um, um, vaccinations are nowhere in sight yet. Mm -hmm. And even if they come, it's going to take ages to vaccinate everybody. So, yes, sir, can, I, so can I chime in on some feedback regarding just the verbiage, um, the vocabulary that's used? Um, sure. When we talk about immunity, um, we don't even know. When, we, when you say COVID-19 doesn't have a vaccine, we, we can't for sure even say uh, you're immune from COVID-19, right? We can't say that someone who's had it has developed antibodies will not get it again. Um, there have been cases... Um, China's reported cases that it, it does relapse in people after they've recovered, right? So, so now you're leaving uh, the door open for a relapse of, of an existing or even comeback of, of a phase two. Um, we don't know if you ever can be immune from, from, this, from this disease and several others. So and, um, are you sure you want to propose immunity versus... Uh, I will tell you, I will tell you what is happening actually on the ground. Huh? Um, I'm, I'm not a medical person. I have no idea about all these things you've talked about, about relapse and how long it lasts and so on and so forth. But what I'm saying is right now, if you want to travel from Pakistan to the UAE, maximum of 92, 72 hours, no, 96 hours before the flight, you have to take a test. And if that comes out negative, they let you on the flight. If it does not, they don't let you on the flight. Now, you know, all of these issues about how long it lasts, and, you know, I mean, I don't know about these things. But what is actually happening is that there is this certificate. If you're test negative, they let you on the flight. 96 uh, hours. I understand that concept. So, so Suhil, wait, uh, just sorry to interrupt you. Well, there is a yeah. case in the CCI sister projects that doing exactly the same thing. If you, if we can, we can talk to them. They have already done their homework and probably developed the uh, a whole uh, system for that. So we can talk. To, I can, I can get in touch with them right now. The people from the CCI are on holidays. Uh, we are going to have our next meeting uh, in, uh, I think, in um, late. Uh, uh, I think first week of August. That's the next meeting date. So whenever I get in a meeting with them, I can, uh, I can talk and figure out. Uh, who is working on the project of immunity certificates and then I can have a one-to-one -one meeting with that guy and maybe bring you in on that and then we can talk to them and see how viable it is to uh, to go take that route. Technically speaking, our whole solution is is capable of uh, doing ex uh, doing what you're saying. I mean, it's just exactly. credential. We can, we can issue vaccination credential, we can issue immunity credential, we can issue a credential that you are a funny person. So it doesn't matter at the end of the day. We have the ability to issue certain facts about you and we have the ability to verify that those facts are, are, uh, are provable. So um, we are just trying to keep it uh, in a niche that, okay, we are focusing on vaccination here. Now, um, I do understand that right now the market and the game is around uh, uh, current, like, uh, immunity certificate that you get tested and you it's valid for 40 to 40, 48 hours or so. And then you can do something in that, like you can take a flight in that time and people can verify that or during that time. So, and it automatically gets expired after that. So we can do those certificates as well, but we need to think it through that if we want to do that or not. I'm suggesting you think about it a little bit because what I, what I see is that if, you keep focusing on the vaccination. Essentially what you're saying is, and I'm talking about within the context of all this PR that's being done. Mm -hmm. Essentially what you're saying is, we don't become relevant until there is a vaccine. Yeah. I tell you the truth, nobody knows when there is going to be a vaccine. In the meantime, people are traveling, people are moving around and, you know, and they are using these tests, COVID-19 tests, for yeah. which they need a certificate. And they need to be a verifiable certificate. And, you know, so this is what I'm saying. Uh, if we do immunity, we might end up being more relevant than if we just keep waiting for the vaccine. So I'll leave it up to you. I know I've come, brought this up many, many times before, wasted a lot of time on this. Yeah, but, but what but, I but see but is new rules, things new things happening. Now, now things are different. I can understand your, your point 
makes more sense to me now than it made three months ago because societies have tried to learn to live with this and open up to some extent uh, based on current situations of their, uh, their, their, their COVID statuses. So it does make sense um, what you're saying. Um, I'm, I'm going to take some time to think about it, maybe discuss it with the, some of the people in the community and, and see. Sure. Um, and sure. let's okay. see. I also want to talk to the guys on the CCI on this because, you know, some solutions, they can work in EU and maybe in, in, in US or Canada, but they might not be so visible in, 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 in developing countries like Pakistan or India. So there could be a challenge in that. There are a lot of, and that brings to my last point actually for this meeting. Um, that is the, the ecosystem challenges. Now there are a lot of ecosystem challenges we are already facing if we want to make it a reality. Now I'm trying to be realistic here that we, build, we can build a prototype, an amazing good looking working prototype that actually does the job. But in order to take it to pilot, and by pilot I mean that it gets in hands of people and they can actually use it and then organizations and institu medical institutions who can issue credentials and C C C CAA, the Civil Aviation Authority institutions that can verify these certificates. In order to get it done, there's a lot of dependency on these, uh, uh, in these organizations and institutions that we need to figure it out. And, and, and there's a lot of these co-innovation risks and uh, co the adoption chain risks there that how it can be done and what kind of people and actions need to be taken in order to actually make it happen. So I understand that if we, if we deliver the POC and then of course it will become cold for a while, but if we keep working on the ecosystem challenges of it and get in touch with certain organizations, uh, I'm not sure, maybe Digital Pakistan, Civil Aviation, Civil, Civil Aviation Authorities of Pakistan, uh, Health Ministry, maybe uh, Disaster Ministry or whatnot, and maybe we can get in get it in place for uh, where, where, that it's there when it's needed, and uh, uh, who knows? I don't know if we're going to pivot, but if we do pivot, it, it those ecosystem challenges are still going to be relevant because those are the same key holders, key, uh, stakeholders that uh, that decide if this uh, projects is going to get in hands of consumers or not. What we agreed last time we discussed this was we will defer this until we actually have a working pilot, you know, a demo. Yeah, yeah. If you recall, I know that. No, we discussed no, no, no. that there is no point in talking to anybody yeah, yeah. if I we can't that. show them something. No, I know that, but what I'm saying is, I'm not saying we're going to talk to the people right now. I'm saying that we are really close to uh, like a demo in, I guess, one and a half month or so maximum or maybe like one month maximum, but we need to start thinking about these things now because in a month we will we'll have a demo and then we need, we cannot start thinking then, okay, now what to do, we have a demo now. So that's, the, that's something we need to start thinking about as well, that how we can, uh, what kind of um, uh, challenges, ecosystem challenges and uh, stakeholders are involved and what's in, the, what's in there for them, what's, what, what they could do with this, it's like we are we are in a we are people who are trying to do this, uh, taking our time, um, contributing without getting paid or anything, paying money from our own pockets to um, uh, pay Azure AWS bills and Heroku bills and all. But at the end of the day, the people who are uh, going to be part of the ecosystem, I'm not sure if they will be willing to take just this as a, a social civic project. So just. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting we we'll start talking to people. I'm just suggesting we need to start thinking about this now. This is the right time to think about it, that in a month we have some sort of um, uh, like pointers at what needs to be done uh, in order to take it to the next step. But you do realize, we will go back to the discussions we had, what, two months ago, um, <clears throat> where we said no, the focus is on just getting this done. You remember me trying to talk about supporting feature phones and what if yeah, for yeah, people yeah. who are not very, you know, up to date with smartphone technology and all I of that. And we said, yeah, no, gotta, we need to leave ask that aside. Questions. To some extent, to some extent, we need to look into that. So I'm just proposing that we think about that. 
we take time, we sit down together and we, we talk. Some of us who are interested in these things. Some people are not. Okay. So it, it, it's how it is, you know. So here, but we have come this far. Uh, we have made some progress. We have made, I think we have made pretty good progress with the people we have. And um, I think it will be, I feel it will be, it will be not just as if we not try to take it to then uh, to at least we, we we need to try to take it to the to the phase where it it can help people. I don't I, I really don't want it to be a project that uh, it stays on GitHub and of course it's going to help other people in terms of uh, the the online GitHub community. That's for sure because the agency and the the app. Uh, apps that we have built, they are really good contributions in terms of international community. But um, uh, uh, as in terms of helping people in general, uh, I would really like that we think about that and you know put some effort into that in, in coming time. I mean, maybe in week or two, we can we'll have our hands more empty when team is working on integration. We can we can arrange a meeting with the governance team and think about how to take it. Uh, what what are the challenges we can be facing? Maybe write them down, figure out solutions, and um, you know who knows where we end up. Well, okay, but you're gonna to have to wear your Pakistani hat rather than your Finnish hat. Yeah, I know. Pakistan is very different. I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna do something about that. I'm a kuch kuch na kuch karte hain. Don't worry, don't worry. I have, I have, I have high hopes. Mujhe puri hai mita. Inshallah, inshallah that we will be able to do some good work. We have, we have done some good work, and I, mujhe puri hai mita ke inshallah hum log. Um, कुछ अच्छा जरूर कर सकते हैं इसके साथ